if you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you need and want more money to fund your deals, regardless of your credit, your experience, or your income, don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into the money and the funding. Well, welcome to the Jay Connor Show. I am Jay Connor, broadcasting here with you from Moorhead City, North Carolina. And I'm known as the Private Money Authority. And so we want to welcome everybody to the show. I'm also excited to have here as my guest host on the show, Chaffee Wynn, my good friend and fellow real estate investor from Chicago, Illinois. Hello, Chaffee. Hello, Jay. How are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing fantastic, Jaffe. I don't know, man. I see your smile. I see your laugh here. You know, if y'all are watching on YouTube, you see what I'm talking about. He's like grinning from ear to ear. But yeah, Chaffee, thank you for joining me here on the show. Um, and just so everybody knows, I have Chaffee here on the show with me. First of all, because we're great friends. We've known each other for like almost 10 years now. Fellow real estate investor, very successful at that. And Chaffee is also a, an excellent, excellent personal development coach and business strategy coach, has that business up there in Chicago. And Chaffee, you're at all my live events. You get to meet my students and attendees and hear the common questions they have. And so, hey, on this show, Chaffee, let me let you start out. No, I tell you what, folks, I'm going to hold that off in just a second, Chaffee. I'm going to hold that off. Okay. I'm going to plug them into the money. I'm going to plug them into the money. After you welcome the folks and, and ask them to do what we always ask our viewers and listeners to do up front. Well, if you're listening uh, right now, please, first and foremost, subscribe to the podcast, right? <laughs> and if you're on YouTube, if you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up or click that like button and comment below. Uh, go ahead and, and uh, put a comment and let us say, just say hi and let us know where you're coming from, where you're at right now. Uh, we love to see uh, who our listeners are from uh, or who they are and where they're from. And if you're on iTunes, go ahead and comment, uh, rate, and review on iTunes for us as well. Excellent. Did I get Excellent. that right, Jay? You got it, man. <laughs> you got it. You got it. So, so Chaffee, let's don't, let's don't make them wait anymore. Let's go ahead and plug them in. So what I have for you folks, I've got a free gift. I got a free online class waiting for you to attend. The name of the class is called Where to Get the Money Now. And what you will learn in the online class, everybody, is you'll learn how to get the money and the funding for your deals, not relying on banks, not relying on institutions, but actually getting private money, which has got nothing to do with your, your experience, your credit, or your income. So here's the URL, okay? The, uh, the website is www dot j connor and if you're listening and not viewing that's an er not or www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast money podcast so that's waiting for you all Jay, you got a special surprise for them at the end of the uh class as well oh yes <laughs> thank you thank you thank you i do we've got a uh, free strategy session business strategy session or personal development mindset, if you want to use it that way, that you will learn how to claim and take advantage of that at the end of the online class. So there's a second reason, folks. And by the way, Chaffee is my is my lead business strategist and coach at my live events. Chaffee sits down and does the one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions. So we'll do this just over the telephone. So you definitely want to take care of that. And why would you want a free strategy session? Well, tell them, Chaffee, what are we going to talk about on the, on the strategy sessions? I mean, as relates to what they want to talk about. Well, the strategy session is for them, Jay. It's, it's really for us to work with them to see where they're at, what challenges they're having and where they want to go. And so really sit down and have a, put together a plan for them to get from here to there and help them overcome any challenges that they might have. So we're exactly. focused on them. By the way, folks, the value on these strategy sessions are $297 and you get them for free and you can learn how to claim that at the end of the uh, online class. Chaffee, for those that may be tuning in for the first time to the show, how about give a little overview as to what the Jay Connor show is all about? What do we talk about on this show? 
Well, Jay, you're known as the private money authority. So we talk about private money, how to raise private money and where to find private money, how to use private money, all things private money. And in addition to that, though, we also talk about all things real estate, pretty much. <laughs> so in the last show, we talked about your your foreclosure system, how you find deals before anybody else finds deals. We'll talk about uh, how to find uh, multiple uh, deals, multiple different ways. We'll talk about how to rehab deals, how to work with contractors, how to automate your business. And one, obviously one of my favorite pieces is we talk about the gray matter between the ears, the mindset piece of how not to just know how to do something. It's actually how to do it and overcome the challenges that might uh, come up when you're doing those things. So, Exactly. Thank you, Chavi. So I tell you what, Chavi, let's reverse the roles a little bit today. <laughs> so you get to choose what we're talking about on today's show. So what you want, what you want to pick my brain on today? Well, Jay, I know you're working on uh, one of these deals today. And I think a lot of people have uh, a question about how to do these kinds of deals. So uh, why don't we talk about how to do a probate deal? Excellent. As a matter of fact, um, well, in the last show, we talked about the foreclosure system that accounts for about 25% of our deals. So in my world on uh, marketing to probate deals, which I'm sure everybody knows, but just to be sure, we're talking about probate deals. Obviously the owner or part owner of a property has passed away and is no longer with us. And so now that property goes into what's called it is into an estate or into the probate process to where that prop to where, you know, companies or individuals have a time period to place any uh, claims or uh, as to any money that the estate may owe them. And it's in this process that we as a real estate investor or real estate entrepreneur are able to market to the heirs of the estate to possibly provide a solution to where the uh, executor uh, or the owners of that estate may want to sell the property. So it accounts in my business for about 15% of the deals that we do. I mean, Chaffee, you know, my lands, we got over, I mean, at our recent mastermind meeting, of course, you're at all of my mastermind meetings, I gotta have the mindset piece, right? But at our recent mastermind meeting, which was like, I don't know, six weeks ago or, or so, we at the mastermind, we identified over a hundred different ways that we find deals. And of course, as as you want to talk about the probate uh, process, that's just one of the ways. But it's a significant, it's a significant way to find deals because I say 15% of my business. I would not have without the probate process and system that I use. Well, Jay, let us let me ask you a few questions about this probate uh, business uh, that you have. And to wrap everything up together, maybe you can tell the story about the deal that you're current do, currently doing um, and just, you know, tie it all together at the end. So, you know, the first question, I guess, then that people ask is, where do you find these probate deals? How do you find them? Or, you know, what's what's the, the source of probate deals? Well, years ago, when uh, when we started marketing to probate, I did it the hard way. <laughs> it seems like when I started out in real estate investing, anything new that I tried, it was the hard way <laughs> until I found the easier way. And and of course, how do you find the easier way? Get a mentor, right? <laughs> Get in the mastermind group, etc. So the easy way. I don't know if I should do this, Chaffee. I don't know if it's like. Well, I know this is a question that you normally share <laughs> with your students. <laughs> I'm yes. kind of asking you on the show anyway. So I'm not, I'm not sure I should let this cat out of the bag. But since you asked the question, I feel I feel like I'm compelled to, to answer the question thoroughly. So, yes, where do I get the list? So, Chaffee, I'm just going to go have, go ahead and give out like one of my big secrets here as to where I get my list. And so I'll give out the website as to how people can contact the company and, and they can contact the company and, you know, they can Come get on, Jay, spill it. Let me hear I, it. I know it's like, it's like, you know, 
I'm having trouble opening my mouth. So here's the here's the website, everybody. And in fact, um, uh, I'll I'll try to put underneath my fingers right here uh, when we edit the show. I'll I'll um, I'll try to put the actual website here on the video. So the website is www.usleadlistsingular.com. So it's www.usleadlist dot com. And of course, as you know, Chaffee, I mean, this is the kind of like really, really valuable content that uh, my attendees and students get, you know, when they attend, you know, my live events. Right. But right. So, here's so let me the, reiterate that, Jay. I mean, when, when the students attend your live events, they, they get huge value and you share some of these resources. And I kind of pushed you on the show to share one of them. Um, yes, you do. want to make sure that we have some value for our, our listeners here as well. And, you know, if you haven't written that that link down or that site down, definitely, because this is not just some website that you found out there. This is tried, true and tested. This is what you're currently using yes. for your business. Right. Not just something that you heard in the in the, you know. Interest space. No, it's, in fact, I don't teach. And, and you know, this, Chappie. I don't teach or share any kind of resources or any kind of systems unless I am using them and they are and they are working now. Because right. I mean, my Lance Chaffee, I mean, you know, I don't care what business we're in, it changes. I mean, right. I mean, there was a really hot resource that I used up until about nine months ago, no, six months ago, that was like giving me like 50 leads a week. In my small area, I mean, you know, I'm here in the, my, my target market's only a, a 40,000 people. And, you know, we're doing three transactions a month, over $60,000 profit per deal. And I was getting 50 leads. Well, guess what? That resource does not work today. And right. no need to go into why and what it was. But the point is, I'm only giving out resources and information that's working right now. So, yeah. And the way the list works is, the company will not tell you. Oh, and by the way, what they do is you subscribe by the county. Okay. okay. And I'll tell and it's not that expensive. I mean, my lands, and it comes out once a quarter. The list comes out every 90 days. And the company will not tell you how recent the, the names are or how recent the person passed away and is deceased. That's proprietary to them. But Oh, oh, what well, I'm thinking about this, since you hit me from the side on this on this question, <laughs> be care if you're in a small area, be careful and do not automate and have letters going out to that list without you reviewing that list because you don't want letters going out that people know you closely and they're getting this letter like, you know, what in the world is Jay Connor doing sending me a letter, you know, and he was just at the funeral, you know. <laughs> But anyway, that's right. where I get the list. I mean, I started out going to the courthouse, getting it, but but getting this from the company is much better. It's automated. It's it's not expensive. I mean, I'm paying for forty thousand population. I might be paying maybe sixty or so dollars a quarter. My word, two hundred and fifty dollars a year. To be able to get the to get to get the list, so that's, not going that's, that's to the courthouse and looking up the records from the courthouse or anything like that. You're just using that list right now. Use the and it's emailed. They email it out, you know, and they don't require you to pay like sign up for a year contract or anything. Mm -hmm. They send you an email like a week before the next list is coming out and they say, "Hey, you're getting first dibs at it because you know you're you're a client of ours. Do you want the next ninety day list?" You know? So you you uh, had mentioned about letters, sending letters. So what letter do you actually send out to the yeah. list then? The letter is very, very important. This letter is, I mean, the, the, the tone of it, is, I mean, we tell them right up front how we got their information. We, of course, express sympathy and empathy, you know, in the letter. We tell them in the letter. You know, they may not be interested in selling right now. You know, they may want to be, they may never be interested in selling or they may want to wait a little bit. 
So the letter, the tone of the letter is very, very soft, very soft. You know, we're here to help. You know, if you're interested, of course, in the letter, we give them the benefits of doing business with me, with our company. You know, you don't have to deal with people, you know, you know, an onslaught of people in the realtor community, everybody going through, you know, your your relatives, you know, home, et cetera. If they're interested in selling quickly, we're able to you know, close quickly. In fact, we tell them we can close within seven days. And they're not going to hear that from anybody else. They may, they may not want to sell in seven days, but if they want to, we tell them that we're able to make an offer on the property with no loan contingencies, no inspections, no appraisals. We, we, we have that right in the conversation. And, and obviously you can do that because you're raising something first, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You see, I mean, in, in, in my world in my students world, they learn all about the private money, how to get the funding for the deals, as I set up front at the beginning of the show, regardless of credit experience or income. So, yeah, we use we I mean, very seldom like it's, it's like negligible. Very seldom is an estate or, or heirs of an estate going to sell to us real estate investors in any kind of creative way. I mean, if there is a mortgage on the house. In all likelihood, they're not going to sell it to a subject to the existing note. They're not going to give us an option in most cases. They want all the money. Right. Okay? So therefore, I mean, I might as well say 100% of the time, we use the private money to fund the deal. But the letter is so important. Now, you know, in the previous show, we talked about my foreclosure system, where we use sequential letters or sequential mailings. Right. And I don't for the probate. It's soft. I don't want to be, you know, you know, hitting these people over the head. One letter. Now, what I find is very interesting about this letter, Chaffee, and you and I, you know, we've talked about, you know, my probate system, but not all that much in detail. Mm -hmm. What I have discovered with these people, the executor or the heirs of the estate, they will hang on to this letter forever. I mean, I will sometimes get a response over a, a year down the road, a year uh, from you know them getting the letter, some will respond right away, type of thing. But they hang on to the letter. So yeah, the letter is very important, very soft. So there's there's a uh, common letter that's sent out that most investors use, and I'm assuming you don't use that letter, right? So what what letter shouldn't you send <laughs> out, Jake? Can you talk about that a little bit? <laughs> oh my word. And listen, folks, if, if you haven't if you haven't really started listening closely to this show until right now, you don't want to miss this. So if you know, if our listeners and viewers, Chaffee, know what a yellow letter is, mm -hmm. do not mail a yellow letter. I to, hear it works so well, though, Jay. I mean, it high works, conversion rate. It works fantastic for most other lists. <laughs> OK, but for the probate list. Oh, my word. Well, ask me how I know not to do this. <laughs> how do you know not to use that yellow because letter? I, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> what because kind of response did you get for that? <laughs> it was horrible. It was horrible. So listen, folks, if you don't know what a yellow letter is, don't worry about it. You don't need to know on this show what a yellow letter is. <laughs> but anyway, we'll talk about yellow letters on a future show on how to find deals because yellow letters do work. Okay, let's go ahead and tell them, Chaffee. Tell them what a yellow letter is. <laughs> well, yellow it's letter. Enough. I mean, it's a yellow letter that says, I want to buy your house with your name on it. And that's it, right? It looks handwritten. It looks handwritten. Yeah. It's most of the time it's not handwritten. It's, you know, a, a handwritten font. Right. And it's, I mean, it's a, I mean, they get it in the mail in an invitation envelope, hand addressed, on, and it's a yellow, yellow piece of paper yeah. of a, of a and all it says is, hi, you know, my name is such and such. And I want to buy your house located at blank. Call me at, at a phone number. And it's folded yeah. up in force. The reason it works, and we'll talk about it later. But the reason it works is because it's like getting an invitation or a, a thank you card or whatever in the mail from your grandmother. So the, the, the envelope gets opened up and it works for other lists. But here's why it doesn't work for probate. There's no empathy. There's no sympathy. There's no, there's no nothing. 
And I tell you what was really embarrassing. I mean, really embarrassing for me years ago when I was like green, I had just learned about yellow letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to send out yellow letters to my, to the probate list. You know, I got a phone call. Oh, but we'll talk about that in a minute. I got a response from this young lady who I had, I mean, I didn't know, know her like really close, but she's like a distant family member. And I mean, the voicemail was, I cannot believe you have sent this letter for, for you know, my granddaddy, you know, recently passed away and you want to buy the house and we want to keep it. And I mean, it was just on and on and on. I was like, I mean, I was so embarrassed. I wrote her an actual handwritten note of apology from me. Never mailed another yellow letter. So, yeah, do not mail the yellow letters. <laughs> so speaking of responses, Jay. Right. Uh, who who answers the calls? Who, you know, when, when you get a response back, who should answer that call and what should you say? I'm glad you asked because I learned this the hard way too. do not send these people to a 24 hour recording message hotline. Do not send these people to your aunt to an answering service. Like, you know, on one of the shows, I need to I, we need to give out our resources or my resources on how you really automate the business and, you know, use the 24 hour recording message hotlines and stuff. But these people, particularly the elderly, OK, if it's a spouse responding and they have lost their spouse, OK, they want to talk to you. They don't want to talk to an answering service. In fact, Chaffee, I don't even think I've shared this with you. The probate letter that I mail out or I have mailed out. Now, I do have that piece automated. OK, I've got the, the same person that mails out the foreclosure letters uh, from my foreclosure system mails out the probate letters. Now, the envelope is important too, Chaffee. The envelope is hand addressed, actually hand addressed by the lady that mails the letters out. A live stamp. A live stamp goes on the envelope. So nothing going through the meter, you know, at the post office. Very personal. But the probate letter, Chaffee, is the only piece of marketing that I have go out that they actually are calling me on my cell phone. OK, so I, I mean, I could automate that out. I could give it to our acquisitionist. Right. I, I could have them call my acquisitionist. But I've been doing the business for such a long time here in a small area. The name Jay Connor is so widely known and that a lot of these people that get this envelope, they've heard my name. They may not know me personally, but they've heard my name. And when I actually pick up the phone and answer it, or they've gone to my personal cell phone voicemail and it's me actually calling them back, it makes a big, big difference. Well, that kind of brings me to the next question, which is really the tone of voice that you're using, the tonality, the way you're talking to them. And they have a certain expectation like you said, that they want to speak with you instead of some automated system or virtual assistant. So what, what kind of tone do you use with them and, and how do you respond to them? Yeah. So even though my letter expresses empathy and sympathy, when I, when I, I, I know, and of course I'm going to know right up front, when they identify that they've gotten the letter and they're calling from such as this property, well, I know that it's probate because that's the only letter that's got my cell phone number on it. Right. And so I immediately offer my condolences and, and my sympathy for their loss. And so I'll, I'll say right up front, I say, well, well, first, you know, before we discuss, you know, your desires and the situation, you know, revolving around your property, first, let me, you know, offer my condolences and sympathy. I'm, I'm just so sorry to hear about your loss. And then I pause like that. I let them respond and, you know, they and, and so my tone of voice, I mean, they're going to hear. I mean, you know, Chaffee, my lands, you know, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Right. You know, yeah. and if I'm coming across like some kind of salesy person, I'm going to turn them off big time. And plus, and, and you know, and it's got to be genuine and, and, and it's got to be sincere. I mean, I am generally. I'm generally, you know, sorry for their loss, you know? And so we'll talk about that for a little bit. And then the magic question, the magic question is 
And here it is. It's so simple, but so powerful. After I offer my condolences, we talk about that for a moment. You know, I may ask, well, you know, how many years were you all together? That kind of thing. The magic question is, I'll just say, well, tell me about your situation and what you're thinking. That's the question. So for all the listeners out there right now, if you didn't write that question down, <laughs> get out a piece of paper and write that down, right? Because that's the question that needs to be asked, right? Can you say that question. again, that question yeah. again? Yeah, the question is, uh, so after the condolence and stuff, the question is, well, tell me about your situation. That's it. So when I say, tell me about your situation, and I may, and I may add to that, tell me about your situation. And I may, I'm not only going to say, and the property, I'll say, tell me about your situation. Here's what happens. That is such an open-ended question. I mean, it doesn't get any more open-ended than that. I didn't identify what situation for them to answer. But here's why that question is so powerful. Tell me about your situation. They are going to immediately go to their, 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 their hotspot or they're, they're immediately going to talk about what is most important to them. So if, you know, tell me about your situation. Well, if they start talking about the property or the house, then you know, maybe it's maybe it's maybe they're going to be talking about well, it, it just needs it needs repairs. You know, they may be talking about that. So they know. I mean, you know immediately that oh, that's why they're calling me is because they know they may have trouble selling it and listing it with a realtor. And of course, in my letter, I talk about I buy properties in any condition. Tell me about your situation. They may immediately start talking about the person that passed away. All right. So they may want to talk about that some more. So when I so the two things, tell me about your situation. It's so open ended. They get to talk immediately about what's the most important to them. And you're letting them lead the conversation when, in fact, they are not leading the conversation because we know whoever asks the questions is leading the conversation. So after they answer, tell me about your situation, then I'll get into talking about the property. As far as talking with them about how much they want to sell the property for, that's last. That's last. We want to really have them engage in the conversation in a very warm and welcoming way to where they talk. And I think that's key. Sometimes, you know, these individuals, they, they want to tell somebody about what's going on. And when you ask that question, it gives them permission to share, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, so, so Jake, I'm going to interrupt you and, and tell about the, the current deal that you have going on. You know, what, what happened there? What's the, you know, how you got that deal and what does that look like? Sure. So in the last quarter of names that came out, we sent the letter out and this particular this particular lady, well, first, let me start first. So the letter went out, her son-in-law responded. And what's interesting is that he is a very well-known realtor here in the area. And what's really interesting is that, and I don't know why, none of my business, I don't need to know why. People make their own decisions for their own reasons, okay? So I figured out years ago, don't figure out why people want to do what they want to do. They got their own reasons. Right. And it's not for me to try to figure out. But they do not want to list a property in the multiple listing service. Well, I mean, my lands, he's a realtor. I mean, the broker in charge of an independent firm. They wanted to do business with a real estate investor and just be done. So the son-in-law responded to the letter. And the time frame, the letter went out. Let's see the letter. So I found out that his mother-in-law, she had passed like about 60 days prior to them responding to the letter. So it was about two months. And so the son-in-law responded. We had a similar type conversation like I just described. And on that call, oh, we didn't talk price. We didn't talk price which is out of the ordinary because I normally do, but we set an appointment. We went to the house. 
And I saw, I pretty much figured out why they didn't want to list an MLS. I mean, it's, it was built in about 1980, but it sits right on the golf course. I mean, beautiful golf course here in Morehead City. And it's a nice big house, beautiful, like 2,200 square feet, which that's a pretty good size house for, you know, here in this area. Mm -hmm. And we went out there. So here's the numbers. Uh, we negotiated the deal. Oh, here's another thing, by the way. You see, it's his wife and his wife's sister that inherited the house. I got to meet all three of them at the property, okay, because the wife's sister had flown out here from Oregon and was here. So I got to meet all of them. So I walked around the house, had my realtor with me, and I don't make offers on the spot, okay? We go back, we do our research, and then I get back with them like within 24 hours. So I bought the house for $145,000. I'm rehabbing it right now, bringing it up to date. And on oh my lands, the granite countertops, the uh, all new cabinets, got rid of the fourth bedroom, making the print, the master bedroom, principal bedroom much bigger. On and on and on and on and on. About $30,000 in rehab. So I'm going to have 175 in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be listing it for sale in about four weeks from now. And the after repaired value is right at three hundred thousand dollars. That's a pretty so, good deal, Jay. <laughs> so that's that's going to be a. And you know what? But it was and, and it was a win 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 for everybody. The um, property they got what they wanted, and and so now I helped them out by closing quickly, and uh, they were done. And so then. You know, this is going to be a beautiful home for someone, uh, our family, when we're finished with it. So there's, there's going to be three wins in this transaction. Actually, there's four wins. I funded it with private money. All funded. Go. All funded with private money. And so the private lender is getting a nice rate of return, safely and securely. The sellers are happy. The people that are going to buy the home are going to love it. And then, of course, I win because I'm like the orchestra director putting the deal together. Awesome. Chaffee, I think we're out of time for this show. My lands. Did you? I hope you finished your questions about my probate system. <laughs> I, think we, I think we covered a good amount. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, like we always do, Chaffee, before we wrap up, I like to come back around to you and talk about some uh, mindset. You know, I just so from a um, from a mindset standpoint for the real estate investor. What comments could you give or advice could you give as relates to this probate system and what might be going through the mind of a real estate investor doing this type of business or doing this piece of the business? So, you know, probate is a touchy topic or, or deal situation. So is foreclosure, by the way, which we talked about the last time. And I think you touched on it on the, the last podcast uh, when we we're talking about foreclosures that. You know, when you're doing these kind of deals, it's so important that you come from a servant's heart, that you come from a place of, I want to help people. And that's why we don't send out the, the yellow letters, right? It, it has a different tonality and, a, and a, uh, a different feel to it. And so, uh, you know, when you're talking to somebody on the phone, it's really not, I want to buy your house. I want to get, get a good deal. I want to make a lot of money. And they can they can detect that. And if you don't truly come from that servant's heart, if you're not truly, you know, in it to help people, that will come across in that conversation. So, you know, when you're of the mindset of you're in this business to really help people out of a situation, help people, you know, move forward with their life and move on to whatever they need to move on. And as you said, have a win, 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 win situation. That's when these deals happen. That's when these deals really, you know, they can relate to you. They can, uh, you know, get the feeling that you're really there to help them out. And, and so you're going to succeed when you come with that mentality and with that servant's heart. So if you're new to this business, if you're hesitant about foreclosures and probates, don't be because you're really in it to help people. You're really in it to fix a challenge and, and solve a, a situation and, and really help people move forward. And when you have that mindset of this is my business and it's such a powerful business because I get to help people every single day and then you go out there and do it. That's when you start succeeding in this business. So. Absolutely. Thank you, Chaffee. Well, we are out of time. So parting comments as we sign off. 
once again, subscribe, rate, comment, like, thumbs up. And as always, take massive action. Get out there. Apply this knowledge. Go to U.S. Lead List, the source that you gave them, and check it out. Order the list and, and you know, go on to the webinar. Again, take massive action because that's when you get massive results. Awesome. Thank you again, Chaffee, for uh, taking the time to co-host the show with me today. Thank you, viewers and listeners, for tuning in. And until the next show, here's to taking your business and your personal mindset to the next level. Bye for now.